Hey guys, this is Philip from Season Motor Co. And on today's episode, we're doing a uh, expose on Adam's mid-engined motorcycle-powered Mini. Uh, this Mini, um, we've been meaning to do a walk around for a while, um, but we're doing one now because actually it's uh, going up for sale. Uh, Adam's moving on to another project. Uh, and uh, it's going to be on Bring a Trailer. So uh, if you're watching this video, make sure uh, check it out on Bring a Trailer. But we figure what we would do uh, is before it leaves the shop, do a walk around and show everyone what went into this. Um, as the basics, from what I understand, 89 Mini? 1990 uh, Rover Mini, imported from Japan, left hand drive. Yeah. Um, came with the 998 motor. Mm -hmm and had something like 50 or 60,000 kilometers on it when it came over. It was pretty mint. Yeah. It was, when it was, it was yeah. a really clean car. And then he turboed it with um, like a blow through carburetor setup first. Yeah, draw through, yeah. Draw, draw through, through uh, turbo setup. Yeah. At four pounds of boost, which was fun, but I got bored of that quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, yeah, so now um, it's obviously motorcycle powered mid engine. And um, and this is it's kind of important that this is not a kit. Uh, like Adam built this, everything from the the way that the engine is attached uh, to the trailing arms, to the differential, to the housing. We'll go through all that stuff. Um, but this is uh, this is completely built in house, all by him. Uh, super cool. So uh, yeah, let's just kind of maybe do a walk around. Yeah, so I mean, we're at the front. So why don't we why don't we start here? So. Basic stuff, I mean, still running the factory mini yellow tag brake system, um, but to four piston calipers and 8.4 rotors, got four pots front and rear. Got the mini the, sport. Uh, mini, mini sport, mini sport yeah. yeah. I got a homemade fuel cell with uh, internal baffling and whatnot, which has the motorcycle pump in it to run the motorbike engine. So that's all wired up to the motorcycle's own electrical system. Uh, I converted a, a spare rad I had to a front mount rad, which is quite wide and it's got dual fans on it. Um, so gets plenty of cooling. Do you remember what the radio is from? I have no idea. It was something that was quite big and I cut it in half and-, and Oh, I was gonna say it fits really nice. Yeah, 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 you yeah. cut it, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I've got a uh, Willwood um, master cylinder for the clutch system. It used to be a cable operated clutch on the bike, but I kept snapping the cable so I converted everything to a full hydraulic system and it's been flawless. So yeah, that's- Basically the front and we got also the carbon. Yeah, and you do actually have a little bit of storage space in the yeah, front. Yeah, so I, I can I can put a little storage tote with spares or tools or whatever you need if you're doing a road trip and it all fits under the hood, which is nice. Yeah. And we also have a full boot. I was gonna say boot. you have That's a full well. boot, which yeah. is crazy for a mid engine car. We'll show that after. But yeah. uh, and then on the front, so there's um there's diffuser? A, uh, Custom splitter just out of aluminum that I made, and then the Mini Mexico chin spoiler, uh, LED bulbs in the headlights, and custom painted the, the grill and the bumpers. Just to be different, I don't really like chrome too much. Yeah. And then the uh, carbon, carbon hood, yeah. billet hinges. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of little details too. And then you're running Miglia flares? Miglia flares, because they were the widest ones I could find, and I wanted to run wide wheels. And yeah. Talk about the wheels, because they're super cool. Yeah, so I used to be into building custom Honda Ruckus scooters, and we always got these fatty rear wheels for them. And the guy that machine those, I, I asked him if he was interested in making me a custom set of wheels for my Mini. So these are actually ATV wheels with custom centers that are machined to fit my application here. So I got him to do the offsets so the wheels would be flush with no spacers. Uh, these are um, 12 by 7 with a 2 inch backspace. So I got five inch lift on these, so yeah, it's uh... But I guess because it's mid-engine, you don't have, um, like, 
the scrub or torque steer issue. There, that yeah, no, I mean the steering's like way lighter than, yeah. than it would be with the engine in the front. It, it handles really good. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. yeah. Yep. And then, um, and then, yeah, you got graphic pack and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Maybe uh, let's take a look first before we get to the engine on the inside. So carbon fiber dash. Carbon fiber dash from Mini Sport. Um, fit pretty good. I uh, had to do a couple adjustments here and there. And then uh, billet buttons made me this cool uh, switch panel here, and I got them to laser etch the hashtag ZX Mini and AMT on the bottom, which gives it a little bespoke custom touch. Mm -hmm. um, your mini, or sorry, your motorcycle dash to go with the engine that has your 13,000 red line. <laughs> Uh, and it's cool because it's all, it's like wired as it was on the bike. Exactly. So it just works like the it motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The only thing that's different is there's a little device I have called a speed healer. And it's a calibration tool. So the speedo is 100% corrected to these wheels. Oh, Rather neat. than the motorbike wheels. So. Ah, cool. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then I've got a shift indicator light here. So you know what gear you're in if you are ripping it. Through the through the twisties and mm -hmm. keeping autometer gauges. Uh, autometer gauges, yeah. We got air fuel, fuel level, water temp, oil pressure. Just your main ones that are important. Yeah. Um, Patty Hopkirk pedal for the for the gas. And yeah. And then explain the the brake and the the two levers here. Yeah. So got a fair bit going on here. We've got a hydraulic parking brake. Because I'm running the four piston caliper, I have no provision for a cable operated parking brake. Mm. So it's running a hydraulic unit. It's kind of like a line lock. You put your foot on the brake pedal and you click the knob down and it locks it out. Um, you've got a proportioning valve to adjust your bias. You've got your drift brake here. And then we've got the sequential shifter here. So one forward, five back. Mm -hmm. So full six speeds and you might be wondering where reverse is, and it's my <laughs> left foot out the door is my reverse. No, no, um, the e-brake e handle is the reverse. Well, yeah. the e-brake e will get me around if I need to, but then if there's a place for your need reverse. Yeah. And then, okay, so now we're on to the, the engine side, and maybe it's a good time to, to say, so like the way that you built this initially is you took a, a roll bar, or you made a roll bar? I already had the roll bar in the car and I had the motorbike engine somewhat in situ and was like, I can just mount this to the roll bar. Yeah. It was the easiest way to mount it was just to add taps to the roll bar to go to the engine mounting points. Yeah, so this is this is a, a, a roll bar with an, a motorcycle engine mounted to it, then a chain drive to a, a diff, yeah. and, and where's the diff mounted? So I modified a stock subframe and have the diff mounted to the subframe on pillow block bearings so I can adjust chain tension yeah. for chain wear, whatever. Um, it's a Quaif ATB diff for a mini encased in an aluminum casing. That you made. That I made that's filled with oil and so you don't need to like really change the oil in it at all you just fill it and it's done yeah and it just lasts yeah yeah, yeah. super cool and because of that um, you keep a boot so you've just got a we'll show you it's just an aluminum like cover that goes over top of where the diff and the chain is yeah but then you still have your full boot so I still have my so you actually boot. have more storage space minus the back seats yeah and then a normal yeah. mini yeah yeah, so carbon fiber boot lid. Yep. And then, uh, and then this is the the piece you made that covers the covers, uh, the covers the diff. Diff and chain. So if you needed to get access to the diff or the chain to lube the chain, just pull that cover off, and you can do all your servicing. And it's cool because when you actually look in here, you realize that it's actually not like cut up very much. The only difference they see besides that is the shock towers, which you've the extended. The shock towers have been extended up, um, and that's due to how I've done the hubs on the back, because no longer can the 
the lower shock bolt be in line with the rear axle because I've got the drive shafts. Oh, yeah, obviously. So okay. now that pivot point is moved higher up, which meant I had to move the top mount higher up. Yeah. Uh, which okay. Is why that's changed. Okay, cool. Maybe we can get on the lift after and take a look at that. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is the engine you can see in the back here. So you got a Lexan rear window with some holes cut to let some of the heat out. Heat and yeah, just to get, yeah, mostly yeah. heat. Yeah. And I've got the side windows with the NACA decks to get the ram air into the. Yeah, and these are cool too because so you got it's the normal window frame with the NACA duct, yeah. and then you made these. Yeah, so here. for access to work on the engine, because I mean, it's in the back of a car, it's not like you can just pop a hood to work on it. Yeah. So. Minis are kind of cool in the way of how their hinges work and it's just like two bolts that go into the frame and I'm like, well, I just won't use those two bolts. So it still hooks in, but you just undo this little knob and then you can just pop the window out. And then you can get in there and do whatever you need to do. Yeah, so battery cool. is right there. So it's a mid-mounted battery as well, which is good. And, and actually looking in, you've only, you haven't even cut the rear seats out. You've only got no, like, there's the only, floor of the rear seat. There's only a little pass through for the chain to go through. And I, yeah, I basically just cut the floor of the, of the seat out. And that's just so I can drop the engine out through the bottom. Yeah. To come out. yeah. And then the um, power commander with the auto tune for tuning the motor. Yeah, so it's not, you got like a, a tuned computer, it's not just yeah. a normal computer. Yeah, yeah. And then what's, what's the engine? Engine is a 2005 ZX-10R Ninja with 33,000 kilometers in it. Wow. And it's cool, I know you said before, but it's, it's, a, it's a 1,000 in the engine. And the yeah. Mini was a 1,000, so yeah. it's, it's the same displacement yeah. as it was? It's actually, it, it is 998. Really? Yeah. Really? It's actually 998. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. cool. So it's exactly the same. <laughs> but so even on your registration, it's still the proper engine. <laughs> yeah, it's still 998. You've done an engine swap. No, I haven't. It's a 998. <laughs> but it's like four times the horsepower, probably? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. What are these, like 170 or? 185. 185, yeah. Yeah, at 13,000 yeah, RPM. Exactly. Yeah, you got to be in the rev range to use all the power. Yeah. Um, to get it off the line, though, you. you you don't really have to rev this too high to get off the line, even with the extra weight of the car. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that. You can cruise around town at 5,000 to 7,000 RPM. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which sounds ridiculous. Which by it cars. sounds ridiculous because <laughs> that's the red line on most cars, <laughs> yeah. but it's only halfway up on this. Yeah. 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 Insane. Yeah, super cool. And then there's a custom air box. Um, yeah, so I did that um, feeds. It's got custom velocity stacks in there. And then I used to just have individual filters exposed, mm. uh, but it was getting all the heat that builds up in there and I'm just ingesting heat. So I decided to box it all in and put the tubes on with the Nacoducks. Yeah, yeah. Just to get some cold air in there. And it's it's not carburetor, it's... it's it's fuel injected. It's fuel injected, yeah. individual throttle bodies. Yeah. That's why it uh, yeah. That's why it sounds so good. And that's why it runs so good too. Yeah, right? it starts up way better than a stock carbureted mini ever would. Very cool. Maybe we can take a look under the car and see how you did like the diff setup in the rear axles because that's pretty cool it, too. It's a bit tricky to see with the... Um, oh, is it? I, well, it's got the diffuser on it. Oh, there, so yeah, you can't really yeah. see it. But oh. I do have a buggy here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah which yeah, 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 yeah. has a very identical diff system that I actually copied from here because it works so well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's check this out. So we, we, we can look at this one. You get a bonus feature. This bonus is uh, this is a motorcycle powered doom buggy that Adam's making just by chance right now. Um, and this is... This, this is pretty much exactly what's going on in the back of that. So we've got a limited slip diff encased in an aluminum housing that's filled with oil or grease. It's a helicoil style diff. It's not a clutch pack, so you can actually just fill it with grease and mm -hmm. there's no difference. Um, these are the pillow block bearings and just your standard drive shaft. So I've actually got, I've got a mini quaff diff mm -hmm. and I've got mini drive shafts 
going out to mini front hubs on the back. Mm. So it's all mini stuff. If anything breaks, it's readily available. Except for my radius arms, which I modified to put the front hubs on. I mean, you can't buy that setup, but you can buy the components. And remake that. To remake it if you needed to. Like if the bearings went out, you can get bearings off the shelf. Yeah, yeah. So no Are the axles, stock axles, length? There. Did you make them? One of them is had to be slightly lengthened, um, but apart from that, I mean the CVs are all the same. The CVs, oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Is it? It's, so it's, yeah, it's mini inner and mini outer. Mini inner and outer. Wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. super cool. So these are mounted on a slotted system with a tensioning device. So you just tighten up the nuts and it slides the whole thing out, which tensions the chain. Yeah super reliable i've never had any issues with them yeah and you've also um like this isn't just a show car you've you've, oh, you've the, used this the, car the, like the, that's right through. here there's a yeah. photo of it there you go yeah it's I mean, been in a few events and yeah track days and stuff so it gets driven yeah it's not a trailer queen way any means. no no but, but i mean it's been reliable and it's yeah. you know you've done yeah. like yeah. thousands of kilometers in it yeah. so um, Any of the bugs that were in it would be more kind of Yeah. Long. Oh, and I um, I got rid of the engine mounted uh, water pump. You get mm. quite a bit of parasitic drag from that. And also with the radiator in the front, the water's got to get from the back all the way to the front rad, and the rad's bigger, so you're pushing more volume. So I put in a Miser electric water pump oh, for cool. like a hot rod or, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It pumps plenty of water for this thing. Yeah, I bet, yeah. It keeps it nice and cool now. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so check it out. It's going to be on Bring a Trailer, um, and uh, we'll post the link in the description when we've got it. Um, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments. We'll see if we can get uh, answers for it. But it's a really cool car. Um, I haven't seen one done like this before, especially done completely like in-house here. Um, and it's really neat how it uses the, it's got the boot still, um, a lot of mini components, like lots, a lot of thoughts been put into it. And I've, I've driven it one time and it drives really nicely. Like it's, it, it's not scary at all. Uh, it's, it's got a ton of like steering feel. It's not twitchy. The power band's great. It's, it's really cool. So, um, if you are interested in buying a mid-engine mini, check it out. Um, and, uh, I'm glad we got to do a walk around before, uh, before it goes to a new owner. Yeah. So. <laughs> awesome. On to the next one. <laughs> yeah, exactly.